In the FT earlier this week, in the past week, you talked about being early in the process. I think, Mohammed, that's a really good place to start. We're still early in the process. As we work all of this out, what are you focused on? So, John, first and foremost, I am focused on the humanitarian tragedy um, that's going on with the growing number of atrocities. And that's something you have to worry about in terms of early in the process. In terms of markets and the economy, we are yet to fee see the full impact of what's going on in markets on the economy. And when I say in markets, John, I even include the ruble and what has happened to Russian assets. We are still early in the process. This thing, unfortunately, doesn't go away soon because no one can figure out what the off-ramp is for President Putin. Mohammed, when you start disrupting capital flows to an economy like Russia, which we depend on so much for commodity exports, is it inevitable that you disrupt energy flows even if you don't want to? So first of all, never underestimate the power of crippling a payment system. It brings the economy to a halt. We felt it in 2008 when it was counterparty risk between banks. That impacted the banking system. Um, Russia is now having its payment system crippled. And that w brings to a halt a whole series of things. Um, you know, the energy markets still believe that you can have a carve out. They still believe that you can have an effective way of shielding um, energy supplies. Let me tell you, for someone who has lived through various dislocation, it is very difficult, very difficult to be surgical in the midst of such disruptions to the payment system. So I think we still are overestimating the amount of energy that's going to be supplied to the marketplace unless other producers increase output. Where are you looking for signs of stress at the moment, Mohammed? So, of course, it is, first and foremost, it's in Russia. Um, it is everywhere in Russia. Um, it is an uninvestable place in terms of virtually all um, financial markets. It is in those exposed to Russia, and we haven't yet seen the full impact of that, but you've been talking about European banks. We've seen quite a few mutual funds get hit quite hard. Um, and that's sort of round one. Then keep a very close eye on, on flows. Figure out where is the pain trade and, and who's going to try to get back on side. And then longer term, John, this is a significant increase in the stagflationary winds blowing through the global economy. The marketplace today is, I think, relieved that that means that the Fed will tighten less, and I think that's correct. I always thought it was ridiculous, this notion that they would tighten eight to nine times this year. I think the marketplace now sort of is coming down to a more reasonable amount of tightening. But what the marketplace hasn't recognized is there's a reason why um, the Fed will tighten less. It's not because inflation has a better outlook, it has a worse outlook, is because growth has a significantly worse outlook for the global economy. I want to pick up on the last point in just a moment. You made several other points there. On the signs of stress, people lining up to dump assets. Mohammed, the gates are closed. And you can see the gates are closed in several funds. The exchange is not even open in Moscow. One way of expressing that is through European banks. You touched on that too. Raiffeisen is down by 8%, ING by 7 Sokgen by 6.65, adding to the losses over the last couple of days and year to date as well. Mohammed, when you get a series of people, investors and companies, lining up to dump assets all at once and the gates are closed, traditionally in history, what are the spillover, the consequences from that? So when you can't sell what you want to sell, you sell what you're able to sell. And that's how you get contagion. Um, so it's one thing for, let's take an, a mutual fund that has been caught offside in Russia. It's one thing for a mutual fund to tell investors um, we can't sell our Russian assets and we're going to maintain what we think is long-term value. That's fine. I can understand why they'll say that. But what happens if the investors start taking out their money? Um, Typically, these mutual funds um, are forced to raise liquidity, and they have one of two choices. Either they sell other stuff, and that's how you get contagion, or alternatively, um, they put up gates, which is a massive business decision. So, you know, these things don't happen immediately. I can take you from crisis to crisis, where crisis react first, 
market liquidity reacts second, and then third are flows. So that's why I think it's critical to keep an eye on flows, because that's what causes contagion if we start getting outflows. More broadly, Mohammed, on the last point, we seem to be taking some comfort. This was the point you made moments ago from a Federal Reserve that maybe doesn't do seven hikes this year. It does a few more, perhaps doesn't hike 50 and only hikes 25. That's the short term story. Does that just lay the ground for more problems? Does that become more problematic at the end of this year, Mohammed, going into next year? Yes. I mean, remember, we entered this in the Fed in a hole of its own making. We no longer had a first best policy response because the Fed was late and missed the orderly windows. Now the Fed faces an even bigger challenge. Um, in the short term, I think rather than slam on the brakes and cause a recession, they're likely to opt for tapping the brakes. But that means that the inflation issue becomes more persistent. Um, and that has its own consequences. So, so that's why I'm saying, John, it's early in the process. I understand people who want to buy the dip. I understand this notion that the Fed will be um, less hawkish. I understand the valuation argument. Um, I understand all these things. But in reality, we're looking at so many potential outcomes. Um, with technicals playing a much bigger role um, and not being offset by stronger fundamentals. The fundamentals are weaker today than they were a week ago.